Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Now, now, the gun. Stand by this terrible battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. in memory. I sometimes long for the physical activity which I can know can be mine no more. But in those days I was still vigorous and had been too long on land. The endless round of social activities had palled and I was beginning to yearn for the pitch of a ship under me and the sting of the channel wind on my face. I was bored as I sat in Westminster uh, Abbey uh, dressed in crimson and white and laden with regalia, uh, listening to a dull sermon... Uh, while around me, the beautiful building blazed with the colors and arms of fellow knights and nobles. I sat in a stupor of boredom, which was suddenly broken into by a whispering naval lieutenant who appeared at my elbow. Compliments of Lord St. Vincent, sir. His lordship would like a word with you immediately. Oh, sir, I'm with me? Oh, uh, I will tell his lordship that I will come this instant. You desire to see me, my lord? Ah, oh, Hornblower. Um, ready for immediate active service now, Hornblower? Why, yes, my lord. I had to start tonight. Uh, uh, yes, my lord. Um, <clears throat> on what service? Suppression of mutiny. It's like 94 over again. Did you ever know Chadwick? Lieutenant uh, Augustine Chadwick? Uh, yes, yes. He was a midshipman with me under Pellew. Well, he's... Ah, uh... oh, here's my coach at last week. I'll drive you to the Admiralty and give you your orders. Now, jump in, Hornblower. Thank you, sir. Chadwick had the 18-gun brig Flame. The crews mutinied in the Bay of the Seine and are holding him and the other officers hostage. They turned a master and mate and four loyal hands adrift in a gig with, with an ultimatum addressed to the Admiralty. Uh-huh. Yeah, the gig made Bembridge last night, and uh, here's the papers they brought What's the ultimatum, my lord? Well, they want an amnesty blast him. We're to hang Chadwick and forgive the loss of them, or they'll they'll hand the brig over to the French. The crazy fools. Yeah, mind you, it's possible they had some cause. Chadwick's in his fifties and still only a lieutenant. He was always bad tempered, and lack of promotion made him worse. The coach drew into the Admiralty Yard, and I followed the First Lord to his room. I give you a free hand and you can set about it any way you like. Mm. I can spare you three ships of the line if you want them, a couple of frigates, bomb vessels, there's even a, a rocket vessel if you think you could use it. Yes, uh, it doesn't seem the sort of situation where sheer force would be of much use, my lord. Will you uh, give me full powers, well, to negotiate, for instance? No, damn it, I will not negotiate. Well, 
Well, I know what you're up against. Uh, those insolent swine can slip into the mouth of the Seine and give themselves up at the first sign of danger. Yes, well, if they do that, Bonaparte will have his finest propaganda story in 20 years. Yes, I know, I know. It's, it's brains that are needed here. Now, uh, that's why I sent for you. Besides, the seamen like you, Hornblower. They follow you and listen to you. Yes, but if you want me to talk to them, it implies that I'm negotiating, my lord. No negotiations. We've had enough of that in 94. Well, then, the card blanche you gave me is no more than the usual naval officer's orders, my lord. Forgive me if I point out my position, sir, but this is a difficult task. Failure endangers the country and makes me the laughing stock of the Navy. Success brings no honor, for it must remain secret. I submit, sir, that the least I should have is full power to do whatever seems best on the spot. Uh, oh, all right, you shall have your powers. I'll draw up the orders to that effect. You'll hold your appointment as Commodore, of course, sir. Man? Well, I expect 
you're wondering what has sent me to see with you. All right. Yeah, well, well, I'll, I'll tell you. Before. There is villainy afloat. Oh, British oh. seamen have disgraced themselves. They've mutinied in the very presence of the enemy. Oh, my God, he's running a risk. Can't you saying the word mutiny to a gang like this? Yeah. We're off the French coast, too, and they, they know that Bonaparte will heap wealth and luxury on any crew who brings in a British ship. Now, listen, man. The crew of our own sister ship, the Flame, has done this contemptible thing. Now they're sheltering here in this very bay of the Seine. Every man's hand is against them. The French have no use to mutineers, and it's our mission to dig these rats from their holes. They betrayed England, remember. Forgotten their duty to king and country. The villains who have led them astray must pay the price of their villainy. If they're mad enough to offer fight, then we must fight them. If they surrender without bloodshed, that will be remembered in their favor at their trial. I want no bloodshed. But if that's what they want, they shall have it. Good old boy! Clever, that was. Never gave him a clue that he thought they might follow the flames' example. <laughs> they're happy enough and flattered at being told. Well, I... Uh, I uh, 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 well, that will do, man. About your work now, and remember, I shall expect unquestioning obedience. Consideration. The only trial I'd attend to be to bear witness against Chadwick. 
A fellow we killed, James Jones, a ship's boy. And reported that he died of fever. Aye, and a few other things, too. Our terms are full pardon for us and a fair trial for Chumwick. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. right. You're being very foolish. You're throwing away your last chance. To enter now with Mr. Chadwick unbound and the ship in good order, and that will weigh heavily in your favor. Refuse, and what can you look for? Death. That's all death. Nothing can save you from your country's vengeance. Uh, nothing? <laughs> Begging your pardon, but Boney can. You trust Bonaparte's word? Sure. He'd like to have this ship, no doubt, but you and your gang. He won't encourage mutiny. His power rests too much on his own army. Your hand you back will be made an example of. <laughs> Will he now? Look at these letters. Three of them. No, no. I'll keep hold of them. Thank you. This is from the military governor of Arbor Grace. And that only promises us a welcome. This is from the prefect of the Department of the Inferior Saints. It promises us provisions and water if we need them. And this is a letter from Paris sent down to us by post. It promises us immunity from arrest civil rights in France, and a pension for every man from the age of 60. Oh, and do you know who it's signed by? Marie Louise, Empress, Queen and Regent. <laughs> Boney won't go back on his wife's world. <laughs> you mean to tell me, ma'am, that you've been in communication with us all? Aye, we have. And if you had the prospect before you were being flogged round the fleet, you'd do the same. Can that be done? 
I can do that. Then. Well, might I ask what's in your mind, Sir Rachel? You may, Mr. Freeman. What I propose is this. Flame and Porter Taylor are as like as two peas, as you said yourself. And they'll be like her yet when we bend that port off for The mutineers have been in communication with the shore. And they have a promise of immunity if they go in. But we don't want them to go in, sir. No, and she won't. Sweet won't give himself up to the French unless he's driven to it. So we won't drive him. We'll sail into the mist. But we'll go in, Mr. Freeman. And they'll think we are the flame, don't you see? We'll sail in as safely as though we were going into Portsmouth Harbor. By heaven, sir, it's brilliant. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.